Hello, good to have you here. Now, there are quite a few things that can sabotage our earnest efforts to declutter. But with a little bit of planning, you can sidestep them easily and take back control of your home. Thanks again for joining me today. Please like my page if you're on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also remember to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. And please share it with your friends and your family so that it can help them too. So the big question is, how do women like us, who are wearing so many different hats each day, and who don't cheat by looking like we have everything under control, take back our homes and life, free from the chains of clutter? How do we simplify, get started, get unstuck, let things go and create more time, so that we can truly focus on what is essential for a happy and healthy life with our loved ones? That is the question. And this show will give you the answers. My name is Lizelle Tenton and welcome to the Vanilla Essence Show. So let's look at a few things to remember when you are planning to declutter. Number one, remember your why. Why you want to declutter or why you need to declutter will always be your biggest motivator to start to declutter, to push through when things get tough and to finish what you have started. Maybe you want to declutter to create more space, or if you declutter, you will be able to start to entertain again. It can be for health reasons, for better relationships, to feel more in control, or just for a more peaceful environment. Whatever your reason, you need to know and constantly remind yourself why you are decluttering. So take some time and ask yourself, why and then write it down somewhere where you can have a look at it constantly to remind yourself why you are doing this. Number two, make sure that the stuff that you are throwing out, the stuff that you are letting go, leaves the house immediately or as soon as possible. If you leave stuff like the stuff that you are letting go to just pile up in a corner somewhere, the chances are so huge that it might just become part of the clutter again. It must leave your home as soon as possible, if not immediately. Garbage and broken items must go to the garbage bin, and items that you want to donate must go in the back seat of your car to deliver the next day. And also identify one or two places where you can drop off those unwanted items that are still in a good condition before you start to declutter. This will just streamline the whole process so much more. And if there is a possibility that there might be items that will need to be taken to a dumping site, make sure to secure someone that can help you before the time. It can be just plain disheartening to stare at piles of stuff standing around after you have put in all that hard work to declutter. Number three, tackle the big stuff first. Now, if there are big pieces of furniture that you want to let go of, get rid of them first. It will instantly make your home feel more spacious and it will also free up a lot of space that you can use while you are decluttering. So before you tackle the piles of small items like clothes and kids' toys and dishes, see if there is anything big that you can get rid of first. These can be items like I've mentioned furniture or bikes, sport equipment, um, even baby strollers that you don't use anymore. And number four, tackle your own clutter first. The whole family might not be so supportive of this decluttering purge that you are on, but make sure to focus on your own stuff first. Lead by example and then hopefully they will follow suit. Tackling your own stuff first will already make a big difference and it will make you feel like you are much more in control. Number five, start with a smaller area first. I always advise the women that I work with to Break the decluttering task up into smaller, manageable pieces and then start with a smaller section or area first. You can divide your home into the kitchen, the dining room, the living room, bedroom, bathroom, etc. And then you choose an area to start with and usually a smaller area that is not so cluttered first. This will just ensure that you don't feel overwhelmed while in the process and Remember, don't move on to the next area until you have finished the area that you are busy with. Each one of these small wins will be a great confidence booster and it will motivate you to carry on and push through. And then last but not least, 
those just-in-case items. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a certain amount of emergency supplies. It is completely another story, though, if you are saving every plastic spoon or worn-out blanket for just-in-case. So if you discover that you're trying to convince yourself into keeping something for just in case, get specific and ask yourself some questions. Just in case of what exactly? And if you are scrambling to find an answer, it is probably time for those items to go. So remember these pointers when you are getting ready to declutter. It will help you to make a huge success of your efforts and your hard work. Thanks again for joining me today. Please like my page on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram or subscribe to my YouTube channel. But first, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and share it with your friends and your family so that it can help them too.